the divorce rate is 50%, I don't know if it's getting any, any lower or if it's climbing. But people just having a, have a hard time living together. A lot of people feel like there's kind of no, no better way. Even if they tried counseling, they see that maybe even the therapist told them to get divorced. And my therapy is coming from a different perspective. Obviously, there is a thing called divorce. It's, it's allowed if people want to do it, that's their prerogative. But we feel that divorce is often an exit. It's a way of checking out, of really dealing with the relationship and, and working on the relationship. And it makes sense because if you've done work, if you've done, gone to therapy and it hasn't helped, it's very hard to believe that anything could be different. But I've seen time and time again that Imago has made a huge difference in couples who are on the verge of divorce because it helped them see things from a different perspective. It also helped them realize that the very issues that they're dealing with was the reason why they picked each other in the first place. So when you have the Imago paradigm, when you realize that the romantic stage is, is only to get you into the power struggle, and that the power struggle and the issues that you're having is not a reason to call it quits, but it's really a means towards an end, to create what we call the conscious marriage, then you can see that leaving the relationship is not gonna solve the problem. And in fact, if you're 50% of the problem because of the childhood baggage you brought to the relationship, you're going to bring that with you into whatever relationship you go to. We have couples do an exercise in, the, in our retreats where they write down childhood experiences, the positive and negative traits of their par parents, what they wanted, needed most, and didn't get. And when you realize that, you also realize that you're likely, if it's your, if it's, if it's what you're drawing into your life, you're going to draw that into your life with someone else. Because we need to draw that into our life until we can heal and get it fixed. So you're gonna keep getting opportunities. So if you can't do it the first time, you'll have to do it the second time. We encourage couples to work it out. We encourage couples to see that their marriage can be restored. Ultimately, it comes down to commitment. If one person doesn't want to put in the work, it's not going to work. Or if both people don't want to put in the work. If one person's checked out, if one person is having a romantic phase, like an active affair with someone else, it's going to be very hard to change unless they end that relationship. But we're looking at things from a totally different perspective. So we believe that any couple that wants to stay together and wants to do the work is, can stay together. Now, there's always exceptions. We're, not, we're dealing with most normal cases. We're not talking about cases of physical abuse. Uh, we're not talking cases of people that are with someone psychotic. I mean, obviously, they're, they're, they're various. There's, there's always an exception to the rule. But as a general rule, compared to the general rule now where if your relationship's not working, just get divorced because you're married the wrong person, we say your relationship's not working, you probably marry the right person. Let's understand why. We understand why, and now we have to do the work to decide if you want to do the work with this person to make it right.